Hi everyone. This video will be a instruction video uh, about how this effect is most likely working at my best understanding. Uh, here's my preferred coil which has got two uh, the dual coil, dual windings and here is an identical core that's wound with a stand with the same wire in a standard way that a toroid is wound. So it's just a single coil on it. Okay and uh, what I've done is I've got this coil to the identical DC resistance as that one. You know, people were taking all kinds of shots you know at this uh, it's about DC resistance, no it's the core, the other one's an air core, uh, you know this this that and all the rest of it, it's the magnet, you know it's all kinds of things. So <clears throat> I think it's pretty simple and doesn't need to be complicated. Uh, the effect is really about inductance and that's the bottom line. Uh, right now I have my quality meter here hooked up to this coil here to measure its DC resistance. And if we have a look, that's what we're measuring uh, DC resistance on there. So we're exactly at 7 uh, ohms. That uh, meter shows a little bit more, but it's actually a little less. It's a little under 7 ohms uh, because of the resistance in my probes. I already checked that before. Okay, now let's just uh, hook up this uh, coil here for comparison here and that's all what we're going to do. We're going to compare the two coils and if I hook up that coil okay I've got identical reading. We've got 7 ohms as well on that one. So now the two coils are perfectly matched okay as far as core, wire, DC resistance okay. Now there is one thing though they're not the same what's different is inductance. So here is my inductance meter. I'll connect this coil here okay and we'll check the inductance and that's what we're getting okay. So about 664 millihenries on that one which is using the same amount of wire, same wire, same core, same everything, okay? And this one here that's what we're getting. So close to 1.2 Henry's. So there's a big difference, okay? This one is close to double the inductance of this one and yet they both have the same DC resistance. So I'll tell you the effect works better with this toroid than that one because of the very fact that this one has a higher inductance. So when you apply a magnet, okay first of all yes the effect works with a magnet to be able to send back energy or to be able to get this extra energy. You have to use a magnet, okay? But what happens is when you put a magnet on, because it's a ferrite, the inductance drops. When the inductance drops, the characteristics of the coil changes, okay? And you need a good amount of powerful magnet on here to be able to get that energy. But when your inductance drops, that means that the energy you're putting in there cannot create a very strong magnetic field because to have a strong magnetic field you need a high, in, a high enough inductance. Okay, So why this coil fails compared to this uh, coil here okay, is this one has close to double the inductance. So when you plot, put a magnet on this one it's already got twice the inductance of this one. Okay, <clears throat> I don't even need to hook this one up to pulse it to show you that it's not going to work very well because as soon as I put a magnet on this one <coughs> it's going to perform half of what this is. And like I say the more magnet that you put on it okay the better the return energy is but the more it drops your inductance and if you don't have enough inductance to be able to push a magnetic field to push against that magnet what you're going to get back when that switch shuts off and the magnetic, the electromagnetic field switches off 
is you're not going to get that kick, okay? You need a remaining amount of inductance. There has to be a balance between how much magnet uh, you put on there and how much residual inductance you have left so that when you do pulse the coil, that inductance will create a good enough, a strong enough feel, okay, to push that permanent magnet feel out, okay, and then when it shuts off, that flux comes rushing back in and there's where you pick up the energy okay so again there's no point in me testing this coil the whole thing is that simple okay this one performs half as good as that one I can get this one to just just barely go to zero okay when I get the right balance of magnet on it and you know leftover enough inductance for it to Go back so the secret is okay it is that simple is you want the highest inductance as possible so if you want to you know replicate this effect wind it so that you have two three four five ten million uh, ten Henry's go go out to town on this one you know that's where you're gonna get your benefit okay so if you can actually get a toroid up to 10 Henry's, okay, and you put a magnet on there, okay, and it drops by half, you still f have 5 Henry's, okay, of a magnetic field to push against that. And I tell you, you're going to get a better result that way, and it'll pulse at a lower frequency. Because what happens is, when I put a magnet here, okay, the stronger the magnet is, the less, again, the inducted in inductance is and the higher the frequency will be that I will need to actually uh, pulse that okay because or to get that ideal point where it's creating a lot of energy that's returning okay for it, the energy going in comes to nil right so that's what the whole effect is about I don't know if that makes any sense to you but anyone that uh, has been following this um, you know, is probably going to understand what I'm trying to say here. Now, the other interesting thing <coughs> is I'm capable of creating a circuit that's pulsing the MOSFET, okay, uh, uh, self-pulsing it. And now it's very simple. It's just a, an inductor, okay, again, a, a small coil that's between the source and the gate of the MOSFET. And I'll be giving those details away, okay. And it's taken me a lot of time to figure it all out, but I, you know, you can only do it when you experiment with it. And what's happening is you can't get this effect, okay, using a transistor, because a transistor doesn't work. There's a difference between the MOSFET and the transistor. In the MOSFET, there's um, capacitance built into the MOSFET, and it's that capacitance that's going to start resonating with that uh, coil there. Okay, and then when it start, this starts resonating, then the whole switch and everything works in combination. But there's a certain amount of inductance here, there's a certain amount of inductance there, and at a certain frequency, the combination will work. And it's, uh, you know, a little bit more difficult than what I'm just saying, but I've done a lot of these tests, and I've got a lot of the data down, and somebody at this time is actually, um, you know, doing a study of it, and who knows, we'll maybe even write a program that you could just put in your coil inductance once your magnet is applied, and it will tell you uh, from whatever MOSFET you're using to uh, utilize a certain amount of inductance here of a coil to get this thing to self-resonate. And that's it, you know. So this does work. It uh, is, you know, somewhat efficient here. I can get it more efficient, like I say, I got to bring up the inductance level, okay, and I should use a wire that has less uh, DC resistance, and I think that will be uh, the uh, way to go for the next build. So that's about all I can share in this video here, and uh, thanks for watching, and if anybody is uh, still wanting to see a demonstration between the two differences of these things, hey, I'm ready to do the video. But I tell you, <laughs> take my word for it, uh, it's, this performs half as good as that. And it's basically just because this one has more inductance. So that's where you got to go. All right, so thanks for your time and interest, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.